mas os brasileiros estão tudo no YouTube e tem uns que vão, estão aqui, todo mundo da ABFC, que vai ajudar a participar de algum momento aqui, né? É, é. E aí começa com a Marina e o Frei Rodrigo fazendo uma intervenção, abrindo o um bate-papo, né? É. Falando um pouco sobre a iniciativa. Em seguida, a Gabriela Consolar que está aí, e o Andrei, que a gente conversou ontem contigo, ah, é, a Gabi da Jufra, o Andrei lá de Pelotas, vão fazer a mística sobre Francisco e Clara, e já passam a bola para você, ah, junto com o Augusto e a Ana, que vão, vão tocar uma música e vão, vão trazer algumas coisas bonitas aí de espiritualidade. E em seguida você começa, né? você tem 30 minutos para uma fala, é, para a primeira eu, fala. Eu sua. posso falar quantos minutos? 10 minutos? 30 minutos. Dez minutos, né? Você quer falar dez ou você quer falar trinta? Não, vocês digam que eu me adapto. Ai, não, por favor, não. Por favor, trinta. Fica à vontade para você conseguir abrir tranquilamente. Eu dou uma entrada, depois vamos fazer a discussão. Porque eu sou melhor na respondendo as perguntas do que expondo, sabe? Ah, tá, legal. É, tem a Lilian, que está aqui já. O, o Lucas, que é da Argentina, que está conosco aqui. Ah, de... Eu nem sei onde o Lucas está, na Argentina, bem-vindo. O Ivan e, é... e a Bárbara, né, que estão aqui, eles têm quatro questões para te colocar. Né? Ótimo. É... Então, eu não sei se você prefere que eles façam... Você faz uma fala mais breve e eles entram, e depois você fala mais longamente, fica tranquilo. Não, eu acho que vou fazer uma, uma entrada, tá. como eu vejo a coisa, e depois vamos fazer perguntas, né? Perfeito. Vocês colocam. E o Paulo vai e trazer procuro, perguntas também do chat. Legal. Procuro responder rápido, porque velho, velho fala muito. E quando <risos> quer, se inventa. Então, fica ruim. Maravilha. É Para me permitir mais perguntas, já que vocês são tantos aí, né? Perfeito. André está rindo aí. Agora, <risos> Desculpe. O André, deixa eu te apresentar o André, professor lá da UFSCar, está na coordenação da BEFIC. Ah, tá amigo bom. nosso. Como é que Tem que é luz, Andrade, por favor. Eles botaram agora o, o slide. Ah, o slide. Tá? Deles. Ah, sim. É, se você quiser botar aquele modo... Aí, o que você faz? Olha aqui, ó, você pode pegar, se você quiser. Quando você tem dois monitores, sim. você pode pegar aqui. Ó. Ah, tá. Botar aqui, tá Ô, Igor. Olha que legal. Lógico. Oi, Oi Paulo. Quem é luz, Andrade, aqui dentro do grupo? Alguém sabe me responder? Quem ah, é luz, ser. Andrade? Deixa eu... Talvez... Não, não está aqui. Então, uh, por favor, essa luz, ah, Adriana Libreiros, aqui, ela está na sala aqui, para que a gente... É, ela tá em... Tem, ela estava pra... com dois, duas conexões aqui, luz, Adriana, isso. Luz, ah, Adriana Libreiros, Ospina. Por favor, obrigada. Eu acho ah, que agora fechou, né? Esse? Isso, isso. Então, pessoal... Você... Agora eu só vou passar a instrução aqui, vou, vou deixar na tela um tempinho... Só a instrução para o pessoal que, que, que precise de tradução simultânea. Então, aqui eu mando no bate-papo e vou compartilhar minha tela para o pessoal que está entrando agora para conseguir entrar hum. nas suas respectivas salas. Eu vou começar e depois a Marina e aí toca. Tá, eu... Acho que você puder esperar mais um minutinho não, aí. Não, não. Alguém tem que dar o sinal na hora que eu vou... Ah. Alguém fala aí, pode começar aí. Então, a gente não precisa fechar a, a oh, câmera. Oh, oh, isso. Oh, Igor, eu já estou aqui com, na, na sala de transmissão do YouTube, ele já está habilitado, viu? Ah, maravilha. Tá? Ótimo. Eu acho que na hora que você fechar ali, eu inicio a transmissão. Já temos 300 pessoas aguardando o início da transmissão. Beleza. Você vai transferir para mim aqui ou você vai manter, Igor? Só para Não, eu vou transferir para você. Ok, porque assim eu faço a edição aqui do corte. Certinho. Olá, boa conferência, pessoal. Um abraço. Tá bom. Então, eu vou... E, e, quando eu fizer assim, o Frei Rodrigo já pode iniciar a fala, ok? Sim.
Olá, meu nome é Frei Rodrigo, sou do Sinfraju. Frei Rodrigo, Like to tell the story because it tells me a little bit about him because 
Leonardo is a writer and a theologist who is able to connect the realities. And he can talk to the academia with this reflection of everything that we do. And I think that the economy of Francis and Clara that we want is based on that, on this skill and sensitivity and this, aff this affection for uh, the other people and their homes and to understand that, to rescue all these myths, stories and tales and knowledge of the traditional populations as Leonardo has done. This book is a little bit about that, the marriage of the earth and the sky. So the economy of Francis and Clara is the marriage of the earth and the sky and to connect to that as deeply as possible and to move towards a possible world that can be achieved and a world that happens through several positive experiences within Brazil right here and right now. Now I'd like to call upon one of our colleagues that is going to be part of the delegation that will represent Brazil and she's going to conduct this initial mystical part of our meeting. So Gabriela, it's all yours. Well, thank you very much, Marina. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I wish you all that is well and all the peace of the world. I'm part of the ABFC and uh, I have a heart full of happiness and hope and we receive our brother Leonardo Boffi who's an inspiration to all of us and he is and has been with us in the way through Utopia on the pathways of Francis and Clara but it was the Francis in Rome that called upon us to unite all of our strengths and our dreams in building a new economic system Pope Francis has drunk on the source of uh, Francis spirituality because they found in both the saints in uh, the Assisi city uh, a, a campaign for uh, solidarity and radicality. And this experience is something that was deeply built in the lives of Clara and Francis of Assisi which has been motivating people for 800 years now to live a simpler life and embrace the universal spirituality. And it's within that spirit that we find over 280 Brazilians that are going to Assisi and many other youngsters who in their hearts or minds embrace the dream of building a new world. And it's in the meditation of perfect happiness that Anna is going to read to us that St. Francis introduces to us the experience of endless charity, the boundless love and tireless persistence, a persistence that is a, a brotherly one and a serene one. Francis is in this passage united to the suffering because in him he approaches Christ as a poor person, humble and crucified, achieving the fullest happiness. Today, both Francis, Francis of Rome and Francis of Assisi invite us to do the same, to see those who suffer in the same Christ, abandoned and humiliated, who cry out for earth, housing and work these days. And it is seeking the supreme expression of peace translated into Franciscan spirituality as true and perfect joy that we continue to struggle tirelessly as Clara and Francis of Assisi did. We continue to denounce a system that kills, oppresses, destroys and degrades in the firm hope of building social and environmental justice on a daily basis with acts determined to promote true structural and permanent change. And to wrap this introduction up, and before we move over to our guest, 
Augustus is going to present us with a meditative course and then we're going to have Anna talking about that manifestation of happiness in the world. Peace to all of you and uh, well-being to everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm really sorry. I'm very nervous, uh, Mr. Boff. And as a Franciscan uh, in my formation and a disciple of Arada, me and my wife are extremely happy and very nervous because of the importance of this event. So feel our embrace and our wishes of well-being to you. Friar Leonardo told on the same occasion that one day blessed Francis in Santa Maria de Sanchez called Friar Leon and said, Friar, write this down. And then he said, I'm ready. And then Francis said, write this down. What is true joy? If a messenger comes and says that all masters of Paris have come to the order, write that this is not true joy. Write that down. Likewise, if all ultramontan ultra uh, prelates, archbishops and bishops, and even the king of France and king of England have come, write this down. This is not true joy. Likewise, all my brothers that went into the midst of all the infidels and converted them all to the faith. And besides, I myself have so much grace from God and I heal sick people and perform miracles. I tell you that in all of this, there is no true joy. But what is true joy? Which is the true joy? If I return from Perugia and arrive here in the dead of the night and it is winter time when there's a lot of mud around and a lot of cold, so cold that water droplets freeze on the edges of my robe and always beat into my legs and the blood of such wounds flow because of that and all in the mud and in the cold of the ice I come to the door and after I have knocked and called for a long time, a brother comes and asks, who are you? I answer, I'm Friar Francis. And he tells me, get out of here. This is not a decent time to walk around. You won't be allowed in. And I insist, but he replies once again, get out of here. You are a simpleton and a stupid man. In no way will you be welcomed within us. We are so many and such that we don't need you. And I again stand before the door and say, for God's sake, take me in for the night. And he says, I'm not going to do it. Go to the Cruciferous place and ask there. 
I tell you that if I have patience and do not be disturbed, in this is true joy and true virtue and salvation of the soul. Queridos irmãos, queridos amigos, querido irmão Leonardo, Friar Leonardo, I'm Tomás, and I'm here in the Pastoral of Society. The episode of True and Perfect Joy of St. Francis is a paradigmatic narrative that speaks to our hearts. The guidance of the Poverello of Assisi. Go to the place of those who carry their crosses and ask them. Point us out to the life and the way of so many sisters, Clara, and of so many brothers, Francis, our companions throughout the world who carry their crosses, who walk their paths filled with plagues and wounds, and by so many pains of Jesus Christ, land, housing, work, and access to education, health, innovation, artistic and cultural manifestations, access to life and abundance are our flags. These are the utopias that we dream of and that we seek in the paths of the economies of Clara's and Francis's in Latin America and all over the world. Under the guise of Pope Francis, we are pointed to the path of the poor by teaching that no one is saved on their own merits and that mercy must permeate the social fabric with a new humanism and solidarity. The various sectors of civil society, the Latin American people, social movements and their multiple and plural manifestations are a constituent part of this journey, which we walk together. Welcome our brother Leonardo Boff. We welcome you as a brother on our way to assist. Tell us about life and life made into vocation, mission and liberation. É contigo, Leonardo. Não deu, parece, meu amor. Caros irmãos e irmãs. Dear brothers and sisters. Peace and well-being for all of you. I'm happy for being here, all of you, from so many places, with so many witnesses. Especially Rodrigo Abril. I'd like to thank Mariana for her generosity of words. It's uh, an exceptional person that has uh, given up uh, her studies to be together with the bishop and dismantle all this false argumentation of Vali, dedicating body and soul to the at service for the poor. I'd like also to thank Gabriela, who's spoken so well, the violinist Augusto, and the, the girl that has read, what's her name? Anna. It's her name. And Andre. Let me say a few words, initial words. Why is it that Pope gives as much relevance to this issue of the economy of Francis and Clara. It's a sort of unfolding of the encyclic, which subtitle is its true title, which is the care of the common home. So something so interesting that the scholars such as Max Weber and even Marx himself have said, any time when money, currency comes in, capitalism comes in. So see, after the dissolution of the Roman Empire, the money, the coins didn't work, just uh, exchanges. And it was exactly during the time of St. Francis that started mercantilism. His father was a great merchant and then coins, currency comes in, and then capitalism. And at the same time that capitalism started with its accumulation, individualism, then it appears at the same time, dialectically, its opposition. 
Catalan is the close hand that dominates and holds the money, and Saint Francis emerges in taking care of all creatures, which is the opposed paradigm of capitalism that just know about accumulation, material goods, explore labor, ex the explore social knowledge and sciences, explore mainly nature. And then at the time arises uh, the answer. Uh, the answer to this emerging capitalism. This great scholar, Arno Tombi, it, it's the, has re, he is the greatest scholar of the 20th century. He wrote about 20 volumes on human history. And the last interview he has given before passing away three days after, he said, St. Francis is the most notable person that the West has produced. We must follow not his father, who was a merchant and who has brought into capitalism we must follow Francis of Assisi, which is an alternative, promote love to nature, love to the poor, equality to all. This man will be able to save the West. Uh, otherwise, we will go to, to the meeting with the worst. Arnold Toynbe, the great historian, has said that. So I believe that the Francis, the Pope Francis had had this intuition that is together with St. Francis and Claire that formed such a beautiful couple. Uh, the meeting of these two is, I don't have time to tell here, but how they got in, they fall in love and so on. So the Pope Francis had had this intuition and his encyclic showed us that the alternative to this system, which is a dying system, uh, this capitalism system that does not respect nature, devastate the ecosystem, advance on the green areas. It was exactly this system that has produced uh, aggression to nature and nature then fought back by means of this coronavirus. So if we start from this intuition of St. Francis, which is the earth is Mother Earth, his him said about Mother Earth, and the UN had defined that the 22nd of April is not the Earth Day, it's the day of the Mother Earth. It was an unanimous uh, vote, and I was there something alive, mother of. And during centuries, the Pope has said, we have never offended and, ag and ag aggressed other earth as much. But then it comes a point that it just said, enough, I no longer can endure that. And then he counter, it counter, she counterattacked. So I see the coronavirus, as an answer to our attitude. And the, the analysts talk about the needed medicine, technology, talks about the vaccine, all the devices, but no one is speaking about nature. The virus has come from nature. It's a reaction, a counter reaction against us because we mo have promoted from center is already a war against nature and now nature is promoting a war against us and we, and we have no chance to win this war because nature does not need us we need her and we might disappear and nature will continue to evolve around the sun for millennium without us so it is essential, the team that the Pope has said, an, an alternative system that, uh, an alternative to this anti-life. And the Pope says in his documents that 
they are based on a lie that goods and services are infinite and therefore growth can also be infinite. And this is a lie. Goods and services are limited, no, non-renewable, and Earth is a small planet with uh, not much immunity that does not tolerate, it does not support an infinite project. We must change. Otherwise, we will go to the meeting of death. Bauman, the great scholar, has said, we have many challenges, many problems to which we don't have a solution. But if we don't give hands to one another and together try to save lives, if we don't do so now, then next generation will watch the humanity moving towards its own death. So this is about a new paradigm. So take care is not just a category. And I've written two books on that. And the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, Heidegger, has said that. But even previously, many others have said. When he asked in the middle of his book, The Being and Time, he said, what's the essence of the human being? He says, it's not intelligence, neither the spirit, nor freedom, nor creativity. The essence of the human being and of everything that exists is to take care. Because if our mothers did not have infinite care with us, uh, giving milk and we breastfeeding, we would not know how to leave our bed our, uh, and look for our crate and look for food. So all of us here are daughters and children and sons of this great care. And we have to take the same care to nature and to all beings. And what have saved it was not profit, was not competition, but rather life, care, solidarity, the overcoming of individualism, and is living together more, in a more friendly way with nature and Mother Earth. If we don't do so, uh, Earth is going to send us other viruses, even more lethal than this one. I don't want to frighten anyone, but the biologists, those that study nature, are, are saying this is just the beginning, mm, that we have always had terrible viruses, and this is one of the worst because they have it has it has taken the whole planet. The previous one were more regional. But if we don't take care, they are going to send the next big one, this huge one, which is non-attackable, for which there is no vaccine that's going to exterminate human species. And they said more, the voracity, the greediness of this portion of humanity this portion of humanity that's so great that is against anti-life, this portion is responsible for this imbalance and for making the earth vulnerable. And now um, allowing the earth, provoking the earth to send us another virus which can uh, erase us from the earth. And it's, it's, they say more. They say more, even more, that uh, this group we are exterminating for sixty to six, seventy thousand species, and among those, it could be us, the human species. So it's an ecological emergence. We must save the earth and life now, because if we don't do so, we won't have a future. So see the what how much load uh, burden the and and trust the pope is putting on the franciscan spirit which is a spirit of goodness of developing not, not only the intellectual intelligence but the emotional intelligence and i've been studying it in all his writings he, he, he uses two times the word intelligence and 40 times he uses the word heart, the humble heart, a heart that feels, feels the, the, the cry of the earth, the cry of the peoples. He has, uh, he talks about the emotional intelligence that has hundreds 
of millions of years uh, in comparison with this um, intellectual intelligence which only has dozens of thousands of thousands of millions of years so together with our brother sun brother mount sister mountain in the mother earth it is this feeling that's going to be able to save us it's not this cold intelligence this uh, intelligence that sees a somebody uh, dead and he said this is a dead person but what if i say this dead person is my brother everything changes moves from the hand to the heart so we must develop that which is comes from saint francis the deep experience of loveliness of friendliness to the point of calling everyone my brother and my sister removing from uh, your own path, uh, this uh, warm that was not being able to move to the water and put her aside, you know. The, so, Gabriela, you said uh, to open the window to allow the bird to fly free. You've done that in your own screen, Gabriela. Thank you for this image. Uh, so the great problem today for me is not economical, it's not political, neither ideological nor religious. The greatest problem now is a lack of empathy, lack of solidarity to our brothers and sisters, a solidarity with the plagues of the earth, of the animals, of the forest, to feel empathy, to feel their pain, to put yourself in their shoes, look to the sides and not to the front, to the, to, the, to the top. If somebody has fallen, to help him, to raise him. If somebody is crying, to give a, a friendly word. This is the solidarity that St. Francis said, talked about. So see, the Pope has chosen the new ones because the old ones has went to Pharaoh's school, the school of domination, of capitalism, which only think of accumulation, with com of competition, with no solidarity, no socials, social meaning to life. The Pope has chosen the young people because they have another mindset for them to do an ecology or an economy that has a a culture, bio-centered culture, because, and, and then economy and the poli politics to the service of life. So therefore we have these three T's in Portuguese, which is land, housing, and labor. It is a, the first provocation that, he, that the Pope have mentioned. And the second part is the, as challenging as the first. You don't expect anything from above because it will they will bring about the same thing be, be yourself poets the creators of the new the, the participative democracy from bottom up a new agriculture family agriculture with everyone participating be yourselves those that inaugurate the new and you should have three tasks all your production and all your knowledge is first to life not to the market second always look for social justice because without it no peace is possible in the world and third take care of mother earth because if you don't take care of her all the projects will have no meaning at all and they won't be feasible so see this is just a this is a planning a plan for a new humanity centered on the basic things like land to live and work housing home because we don't live outside we live inside and then labor work work in which we get self-realization we get happiness and we conquer that achieve that which we need to for us to live so he then um, has promoted a new sort of economy a new sort of politics for us to be able to live in a common house and then he promoted to the Francis spirit an important protagonist because we 
people from the Franciscans, we are a dream bearers, but we must bring this dream in a practical way, political way, in the agroecological production, in the way we take care of the forest, of the trees, always enchanted with nature, deep uh, friendliness deep fraternity. We have scientific data. St. Francis had, had the intuition that we are brothers and sisters, but let's see, when in 1953, two important um, uh, American scientists, Drake and Dawson, had uh, discovered the genetic code. They discovered one of the greatest discoveries of science, which was that all oh, human beings, since the originary bacteria, which had appeared uh, three billions of years ago, uh, going through the dinosaurs, the forest, uh, reaching us, all of us, we had the same biological alphabet, 20 amino acids and four phosphate bases. In a more common language means that we have 20 sorts of bricks and four sorts of cement, which we must combine differently and then arises biodiversity. And therefore, the letter of Earth and the encyclic is a bond of deep fraternity among all of us. That which St. Francis had concluded mystically, now we have, it's a scientific data. We are brothers and sisters, and we are cousins of all one another, of one another. We must meet the premise that is in the Genesis. We have been placed in the Garden of Eden to take care of this garden. So therefore, we must internalize this task, promote our molecular revolution, starting from us and moving toward one another, and know that this care é um paradigma novo. É algo tão essencial que pertence a si. So essential that it belongs to the very heart of the human being. Every child knows that they cannot set fire to everything; that they have to take care of all their material, their bags, their pencils and everything. We all understand that. So we should do that as a structure for our behavior and our practices. And everything that is produced and organized in this common house should be cared for by ourselves and the future generations because the land belongs to the future generations and we have to deliver a uh, richer and more uh, prosperous earth to these generations. To wrap this up, I believe that St. Francis had two main passions, the passions for Christ on the cross. And uh, in fact, we should have been crucified in the history. So the passion for Christ and particularly for the uh, poorest people in the community, those that had uh, uh, Hansen's disease. So he changed the rich and dominant uh, uh, tier of society where he came from in the Tuscan part of Italy. And Francis was part of the uh, bourgeoisie and uh, he went to Flanders and he spoke of that very clearly. So this paradigm that was born from capitalism, this was something that came from its origin with a passion for those who are invisible, those who represented the lower tiers of society. In some of the writings, they, it said that they were kissed by St. Francis and they, he walked hand in hand with them. So we have to start from the bottom layers of society. Those who are at the bottom layer of society are the ones that, you know, don't have any kind of desire for power or money or gold. But those who are walking hand in hand with them are the ones that we should mirror ourselves into. This should be our option of life. If you allow me, I'd like to say one more thing, which was, the report on 
great happiness. And uh, I was studying this in several different books. And uh, I'd say that this report that is translated to us these days is the report on true freedom. True freedom, that's what it is. Because it's the happiness of being driven away from the society and being cast in the snow. This is difficult to do, but we have to be free. Jung says that we have the dimension of the light and shadow, light for having kindness, fraternity and sincerity. And we have that shadow aspect of uh, weakness and uh, hatred that are running rampant in our country. If we quite humbly accept all of our issues, our humiliations, everything that is done against us, and not to respond with uh, hatred, and we put aside this uh, shadow aspect, Jung and Freud say that this is the essence of human happiness. Our biggest gift is to have internal happiness. Many things can happen. We can have a choppy sea at the top, but at the bottom it runs calmly. So Francis lived this freedom internally. He suffered violences against him, but he didn't lose his balance and the possibility of integrating all his obscure, violent, shady aspect of life and maintaining his integrity. So this is a challenge for us to look for this integrity and this freedom that is our greatest gift and our depth as a human being. A South African person that was going through the apartheid, a friend of mine was in the taxi talking to him and say, look, how can you sing when there's so much violence? And he said, look, you white people don't understand. Our happiness comes from the inside. You can do whatever you want to us, but deep inside we are free. And this freedom that uh, St. Francis lived and that we should live and we can integrate all of our shadow aspects as part of our, our existence with youth and happiness putting up with everything and we're going to come out of this experience a lot more humanized, integrating the other people's shadows and living with that. That will definitely be a civilization which is biocentric, focused in life, a civilization of uh, the happy life and celebration of that life. Thank you very much. Well, we can move on to the questions if need be. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Lydian. I'm in Florianopolis. I'm an economist and I'm going to start this session with q and A's. So I'm going to start with the first question and then we're going to have Ivan, Barbara and Lucas. Before we get started, I'd like to deeply thank you for this inspiring presentation and talk, particularly to those of us who are trying to design something new, giving the uh, aspects of the economy of Francisco and Clara. As far as the first question goes, before I ask the questions, I'm going to be talking about the group of young people in the economy of Francisco. We are a very heterogeneous group. We have economists, representatives of social movements and, initi and initiatives of social and solidarity nature. And we have young people throughout Brazil some are linked to the Catholic Church, others are part of different religions or no religion at all. What unites us is a, our common project, the desire to heed the Pope's call to build a new economy, an economy that protects biodiversity, ensures food sovereignty, the de demarcation of indigenous lands and agrarian reform that gives do support to the development of communities and mainly the search for the construction of a new narrative, a new paradigm based on cooperation. Thus, an economy of Francis. And in this search of the new paradigm, the pathway is very similar to that of St. Francis. He himself describes his uh, approach as a spirit that fraternizes and is filled with compassion and respect before every representative of the cosmic and planetary community. 
In your book, Knowing How to Care, you write that the human being needs to remake the spiritual experience in, of organic fusion with the earth in order to regain his roots and experience his own radical identity. It also needs to resurrect the political memory of the feminine so that the dimension of uh, anima is present in the development of policies with more equity between, between the genders and with greater capacity for integration. So the question is, how can we young people of the economy of Francis can contribute to the recovery of the roots of the human being and the resumption of the feminine dimension in praxis, political and economic, that overcomes the paradigm of domination that requires resistance and struggle for the people and of the people to create cooperation and solidarity between people and with natural resources. What are the paths to hope? Well, Lillian, I think that this answer requires us to have a sense of process because the system is deeply rooted and it captures our values and alternatives and transforms it into a gain for the system. So I believe that we have to start from four different aspects. First, we have to understand that we are vulnerable. We are exposed to viruses. We are healthy now, but can be sick tomorrow. And we are all interconnected. We are a node of interconnection, so we should be connected. There is no individuality accepted in here. Third, we have to have a sense of solidarity. Bioanthropologists have said that this is the attitude that enabled human beings to go from animals to humans, because when they search for food, they didn't eat by themselves, they ate together in solidarity. So what was good yesterday has to be good today. So we lack solidarity. And also we have to have care for each other. So that's where we should start from but coming from the bottom, because within the system, we can have wedges that can be driven into it. We cannot be resignant. We have to resist, we have to criticize. And on the other hand, we have to bring home the bacon, so to speak. We have to work within that. So we have to have a different mindset to have a working group where each of us reinforce each other's message because on our own we feel alone so coming up with a conversation group is really important and this is something that supports everything that happens all over the world you know in uh, social forums i've been exposed to almost all of them it's really interesting to observe that throughout the world we had even people from siberia that came along giving us bases of experiences, working with agriculture, with small communities, avoiding great distances and living more of a uh, sober life. So we have to incorporate that into a molecular kind of change in our lives, starting with our groups and supporting all of those who are working with that kind of an idea. I believe that, and if you want to read about that, uh, in my blog, I have uh, just posted a very big study about bioregionalism because the very front of this debate is working on the regime because the global system is not sustainable. If we look into regions, not the municipalities, but regions that have more of an homogenous uh, ecologic structure with mountains, rivers, forests, flatlands and population. Within that region, one is able to organize a very sustainable development, a type of economy that uh, everyone is a part of, uh, where the culture is a cohesive system with arts and poets. No one does history of the plants and the mountains because we are illiterate to that language. If uh, we ask, look, we have four mountains here. Where do they come from? I don't know. But we should know because they are brothers and sisters. We have to know all of that and integrate ourselves in such a way that we are able to feel ourselves as part of nature. It's not like nature is there and I'm here. We are together doing something. And it's a view that astronauts say, look, 
earth and mankind the same. It's not like mankind are to the left and the earth is to the right. We are all together in this with the same destination. So Lillian, we have to have a lot of hope, a lot of resilience to withstand a lot. We have to be anti-system, anti-consumption and start by ourselves, lead more of a sober life, don't get into the uh, marketing that the system wants. You know, they make things cheaper and uh, you buy it. And uh, but this is just for them to make more money and we fall for that. So we have to have more of a, of a solidary consumption system and to have a new mindset, a new deep mindset a connection with all the living beings as brothers and sisters and not discriminate upon anyone. Uh, black people, native people, indigenous people, men, women, and to include all of them in the fraternity. But this is a great challenge and this goes beyond our generation where we can have the foundations of a bio-civilization. I believe that we're gonna be mandated to do that. It's not like we want to do it because this is such a devastated land that the system cannot do everything by itself. It has to change. Let's go to the next question. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Leonardo. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Ivan. I'm in Rio de Janeiro. And I wanted to ask you a question, represent the Brazilian youth, um, the guys of energy and poverty. To contextualize my question, I need to talk about the liberation theology. Liberation theology was carried out during the anti-popular reg regimes that ruled the countries of Latin America. It aims to understand the origin of the contradictions of society, always fighting for social transformation. A practical theology that starts from the interpretation not only of poverty of the oppressed, but also seeking all kinds of human uh, poverty and misery, the ones who embrace the world, one which looks at the beings as a temple of God and sees the interconnection between all and everyone, a dynamic faith that wants to save the life and all of its forms through the integral ecology which addresses social justice and ecological justice. Today, the extremism of neoliberalism causes both social and environmental imbalances that threaten the existence of all. You, Leonardo, uh, are one of the pioneers of the liberation theology. And with all of the experience, we would like to know what kind of stance you have in mind to deal with all of the resistances that will be made by all of us in the fight of a humane economy. And uh, could you talk also about the uh, wholesome or integral ecology? Well, Ivan, the main axis of the libertarian theology is choosing for poor people against poverty and in favor of social justice and liberty in that. This is the core of that system and theology comes out of this scandal that most of uh, mankind and the earth are crucified and uh, the biggest fear that many people debate these days is that the billionaires in the world that don't want to lose their fortune, they are teaming together by saying, look, after this virus crisis is gone, they should come up with a, a, of a despotism, 0.1% uh, of mankind that owns everything or almost everything. And by means of the artificial intelligence control the lives of each and every one of us. Our uh, lives and our conference is being recorded. They may know even what kind of deodorant I use. They will submit mankind to a profound domination. Of course, where there is power, there is anti-power. There will be rebellions, left, right, and center. But that has no future as well because uh, Earth cannot withstand this kind of a system in place. So I believe that we should maintain this dream for freedom because wherever there are oppressed people, there are evangelic reasons and the teachings of Jesus and humanitarian reasons to fight for the freedom of these people and associate ourselves with their struggle. And there will always be someone who are going to 
reflect on that, which is basically the, uh, the theology of liberation. The theology is not important, or the theory is not important. The freedom itself is, because that's a gift in God's earth. If people are thinking about that or not, it's important, but that's not the size of what is important, is that mankind takes a step ahead towards more life, more freedom, and not be a victim of an anti-life system which sacrifices nature, human beings, most human beings, of course. So this ideal of freedom is not something that we have come across or invented. Jesus said that, you know, whenever he saw someone sick or blind or whatever, he cured all of them with deep compassion and he died because of this deep sense of freedom he brought about. He didn't die because he was uh, old. He didn't die because he was run over by a camel. He died when he was 33 in a struggle of freeing the people and returning them to freedom uh, they deserve as God's children. This is something that will never die. This is Jesus' past, the Acts of the Apostles. And that didn't know Christianism. That was Christ's pathway. And that pathway is humanitarian by nature. And many people, even if they don't have a religious subscription, they follow this pathway of solidarity, of unconditional love, of forgiveness, of open fraternity. Everyone can live that. That's why after Christ, St. Francis is one of the most important figures of the religion. And I'd say that this is uh, one of the most important people in mankind. I don't know if you've read my book about St. Francis. Only... Uh, Don Paulo and Frei Beto say that this is the best book I've ever uh, written. And even when I wrote the book, by reading it now, I say, how did I come across that kind of information? Of course, I provided 20 years of classes uh, in the theology. And I think that tenderness and this vigorosity are things that walk hand in hand, you know, the tenderness of women and the sturdiness and strength of men. So together we have to talk about coming free. And this is something that Paulo Freire has taught us quite well. I believe that this is our main challenge for our generation in our lives. We should never give up on this. This is the path of Jesus and we should know that uh, we can be subjected to suffering and uh, uh, lots of different issues. I've been to North Korea and Cuba and Venezuela several times, but it doesn't matter. We have to take this uh, with a grain of salt, you know, and say that this is the freedom of uh, God's children. One more question. If you want to... So if you want to ask question, any question, uh, please feel free to do so. We are, it's just a dialogue. No, thank you so much. You had answered the question so well. I don't have anything to say. Hello. First of all, I want to thank the opportunity to be here. It's an honor for me. You have always been a reference in my research. So for me, it's an honor to be here asking this question. My name is Barbara. And I am one of the young ladies that participate in the Clara and Francis Youth in the Justice uh, a village and despite being a young woman i have three kids so i am in a hurry and i am also part of Marais movement which is an ancestral movement of indigenous women and i am in the process of reassuming my indigenous identity and my question has to do with this erasure of our identity and of colonization. And I, I want to 
give some context and then I'm going to ask the question. The southern countries and mainly Brazil, we have been historically submitted to exploitation to meet the needs of the first world. And even today, we are tied up in an international capitalist order that maintains the modern colonialist logic with our GDP based on mining and on monoculture of export of agricultural commodities such as soy, corn and animals. This economic model generates miserable social conditions low wages and unworthy labor relations and leaves serious liabilities of environmental destruction, pollution of water resources, deforestation and destruction of biomes, in addition to blocking agrarian reforms that enables access to land and production of food. Brazil is threatened as the breadbasket of the world. Quotes while sovereignty and food security are lacking for our own communities and municipalities. How to break this colonizing cycle? What can we learn from the original peoples and their ways of life for the transformation towards freedom, justice, fraternity, and well -live, good living? Barbara, this is our greatest challenge. Myself, even discussing with communities for over 30 years, what is the country, what Brazil we want? And in the face of this challenge of our crisis, I have written this book, Brazil, concluding our re-foundation or extending our exploitation produced by Voz's publishing house. It's an attempt to create a new narrative in Brazil based on our ecological abundance, cultural abundance, populational abundance, and then uh, start creating the basis for a new essay of a country which due to its own grandeur, abundance of water, its geopolitical positioning, Brazil is decisive for humanity, and the Pope had understood that. He said, either we preserve the Amazon, but they said, we also have big forests, those in Congo, and and they don't, Papa did not mention our forests, but the Amazon is responsible, is accountable for the rain and the water regime of greatest parts of our planet. So see, a plant that has a 10 meter uh, size, it is, is loud. it releases eight liters of humidity that is then taken by the rivers, by the winds, which is called the um, uh, flying rivers. And so if you knock this down, uh, a, we will have a desert such as the Sahara desert. I've been many times to the Amazon, especially the, in the state of Acre. We have mainly humus and sand. You know, Sahara, many, many years ago, was an Amazon. The Nile River uh, used to uh, move towards the Atlantic Ocean, but the rhythms have changed. The way people promote agriculture was in the, started to become a predatory agriculture. And now the desert, the, the, that that des desert grows one kilo kilometer per year, and it used to be an Amazon, like an Amazon forest, and now it's a des desert. And this might be the future of Amazon, and therefore the strong concern of the Pope, the. Amazon, which means to take care of humanity. I'm against saying that the Amazon is our. Amazon belongs to the earth and Brazil manages the, the Amazon very badly. And it's a commonwealth of humanity because all humanity depends on the Amazon. All our land is, is um, arable. It, it's, it's, we're able to cultivate. We can be the 
table, promote, give food to all humanity. We have the conditions to help humanity to satisfy its basic needs. Uh, Brazil is Rome of the topics, as ha has already been said. It's the most beautiful province of the world, destined to feed the greatest part of humanity. And I agree, this is our vocation, to be open to humanity and not enclosed in ourselves. But now, with this uh, unfortunate one that has been uh, offered services to the United States to deepen the dependence to the empire while we are trying to refound Brazil on a different basis, on different values, and new young people that has that are embracing this economy of Francis and Clara, you have the inspiration, the premises and values to bring in the basis, the the foundations of this new civilization. Jatis Attali, which was uh, a great, uh, one of the assistants of French presidents, he has written a book that's worthwhile reading. It's a brief history of the future, the name of the book. And he mentions the future, quote, the future can be rehearsed and anticipated in Brazil um, if Brazil has governance and has developed ecological awareness. Brazil has all the conditions to uh, make a rehearsal of a new way to inhabit the planet, respectful of nature, fair, careful. And after then, this pilot plan can become universal. So he mentioned the singularities that we have in Brazil, and you're not aware of this. Many of us feel that we are like a poor one, depending on those from abroad. We need to, must be proud, but proud not in order to exclude, but rather to include people, not a military Roman Empire, but the potency of life, generating life and service to humanity. And this, I believe, that we can do. And above all, integrate Barbara, the 55% of the Brazilian population, which is of black uh, ascendancy. Brazil, after Kenya, is the largest black people of the world, and they are the most uh, humiliated. They, they were the ones that have built our monuments, our colonial and Baroque churches with their uh, blood, with their strength. We have a debt that we have never paid you, and we have to pay this debt. And how integrating them, they are the largest part of our country. And we must acknowledge the values that you bring in, the especially the Ubuntu value, which is the greatest African ideal. Ubuntu means I am myself through you. And you say to me, I am myself through you. So we are always connected to one another, one helping the other to grow. This is the greatest tradition, and you, by nature, are a mystic and religious people, full of positive energies, full of all the shams that uh, come with us, come along with us. They are modern entities. They are powerful energies. And, and we can only understand these energies by giving them names because those are important, powerful energies that are in nature and among us. So you give us, you offer us a huge cultural uh, information that are uh, rejected. So one of our greatest challenges is this inclusion and the respect for all the knowledge and the information that you bring us, all your cooperation that's not enough acknowledged in our world among us. Any other questions? It's about, that's about it. Oi, Yumao, Yuma. Me, mi nombre es Luca. Hello, brothers and sisters, my name is Lucas, I'm from Social Argentina Movement, and I've been born in Argentina, I'm part of the economy of Clara in France. I'd like to thank you for the invitation, and I want to apologize for my portuñol. 
Hi, Hi Leonardo. Um, I'd like to ask you what you suggest of, of our work in the French economy to strengthen the unity of the Latin American people, especially now that our governments are not aligned politically. I'm going to answer you in Spanish because we are brothers and sisters, we are hermanos, we call ourselves hermanos, you in Argentina and we in Brazil. Uh, the whole history of Latin America is marked by the Franciscan missionaries. Uh, first of all, the 12 apostles in Mexico, we must not forget that the missions has been created, first of all, in the south of the United States today. The Franciscan has arrived there uh, in Paraguay, mainly Franciscan missions, and then there came the other missions, like the Jesuitics. And so we have uh, throughout Latin America this um, say the, the influence of these saints because people are identified with this poor saint. We are also as poor as him. So I think that uh, these values of Franciscan values is a deep bond between uh, hermanos, brothers and sisters. So all Latin Americans, not only the Argentinians, we have the same roots. And you in Argentina, also those from uh, the Andes, those are high cultures with ancestral wisdom. And I, I really appreciate the Inca culture in, from Guatemala. We have so much to learn from you. So we must to strengthen our bonds. We have to overcome this uh, Henos this uh, genocide geno that is dominating us, that are turning their back, that he's turning his back to Latin America. We need to defend the people. We must uh, give distance from him. This is an honor point. And I, I think that these times are going to pass and more and more meetings such as this one we will have. We will be able to strengthen our bonds and this is the greatest ideal of uh, this great country of Bolivar because we, as, uh, we, are, we assemble a great nation and we must uh, conduct this process of awareness. Thank you so much, Lucas. Thank you so much. Now I see Marina that had escaped me. Good, good afternoon, Frey, Leonardo Boff. I am from the Resist Res Resistance Channel. Many people are here um, th thanking you for having answered in Spanish in uh, respect of them and in this way you become a latin brother meeting uh, coming in the direction of the argentinians we have two questions we have over 1000 people watching us at the same time at the present time and i'm going to pose one question that has been posed in the in the youtube and we also have people that are watching us with simultaneous translation and we have also a good question from these people that are watching the simultaneous translation so i had selected a few questions Givanil de São Paulo asks, what would you indicate for everyone to become uh, carers of inspectors of the earth? In the same line of thought, Sanchez Pedro asks, how, was, how the church is going to be in the era post 
Pope Francis. How can we um, prepare for this time? And um, well, the first question is: We starting by own selves, uh, doing the molecular revolution, not from the chest to the front but from our back to the front. So engaging in the changes, not getting tired of speaking about these issues, creating circles of conversation, and even becoming some sort of a equal, uh, boring person. But meaning not really be a, bo a boring person, but meaning to expand our vision to all beings. Sometimes when I'm taking a shower, I, I see the ants walking and I think to myself, these ants have the same life uh, in themselves as I have in my veins. So I'm not going to kill them. I take care of them and bring them outside. So to take care of life, life is the greatest mystery. This, this great biologist had created this word di diverse, biodiversity. He has a very important book. If you could read this book, you will learn a lot. The name is Creation, subtitle, How to Save Life and Planet. Because he thinks that if we continue the way we are doing, we won't be able to save our lives in the planet. And then he says, I forget what my line of thought, I apologize. So this Edward Wilson, he used to say, Yeah, you are mentioning the molecular revolution, and he created the word biophilia, which means uh, having love for life, having love for all sorts of things. Don't burn anything. My my companion, she, anytime she goes to see smoke, she goes after to verify because our garbage, uh, we should not burn it. We should recycle it. We ha it has this sort of dissipating energy. It, 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 we change, keep changing. So we must therefore change our attitude, include all, all the others, and start with the children at home because the children, they even uh, put the terror to their parents because they don't allow their parents to throw the Coca-Cola can in the window and the children start complaining. You see, mother, mom, you have uh, the, the long, you're taking such a long bath. Please shorten your bath. Uh, we are going to lack water in the world. So since very young age, they start to be the friends of the earth. Two very important things. And now, Paulo, can you repeat you, your question? Yes, the churches. I think the churches are awakening more and more. Uh, I think that the church have a, a important institute. They had created the slogan, the motto, peace, justice, and preservation of life. Already during 1930s, and the Vatican didn't want to enter this movement because they thought the ecology became belonged to the bourgeoisie and with no importance but nonetheless the pope francis went to the uh, concilium where all the churches are present and this Fr pope francis had made his um, past his mission one of the axes of his mission, his mission to take care of planet Earth. Uh, he said, we are living in emergency, emergency times. We must not take it easy. We have to raise the awareness and disseminate the awareness, fr starting from the, the teaching of Catholicism, uh, the ethic principle, everybody taking care of every everyone and up from our lives uh, we must uh, during catechism this must be taught during the evangelization of the children and of people 
Christ, Jesus Christ did not come to create a new religion because religions there were many already. He came in to teach us to live our lives with the kingdom's um, assets, which is the well-being for all. He he came in to teach us to live in a, a good life. He, he came, the kingdom is the new man and the new woman. Pope Francis continuously repeat this. When the Pope enters to a synagogue, enters in a synagogue, he, he prays. He enters into a mosque and he prays. The names are all the Javet and Allah, but the reality is the same. It's the universal God, the God of a thousand names. Which Pope has done then? Has done that previously? He would be crucified by the Kuria. So I see Paulo that based on the nominations that he is doing, taking those that work with the poor people and um, designating them as uh, important figures in the church. I think he's creating a generation of priests around him that are going to continue his mission. So I think that uh, numerical wise, Number wise, we have the advantage and the right to choose a pope that uh, encourages uh, the faith of everyone. He's a Jesuitic, he's not Franciscan, because Franciscans are usually too naive. Jesuitics have, uh, came from modernity, from reason, and he is creating his basis is the the election will then vote on someone from the periphery the cardinals are not uh, nobody nobody wants to be the pope because we're not able to uh, tolerate the scandals we got a person that didn't want to be a pope but who was extremely intelligent and it's the biggest ethical and political uh, leadership all over the world. Many people say that several presidents and heads of states have been to business schools and uh, they are not managing the government, but capital itself. But Francis is not there to do that. He is there to be with the people, to animate the people and the hope. And I want to wrap this up by talking about the end of his uh, text, which says, beyond, beyond the sun. He says, brothers and sisters, we have to follow with a song in our heart because the hardships we have with Mother Earth are not there to take away the happiness of hope. So he talks about the happiness of hope. And I believe that uh, he is the person that is driving that through all of us. And he mentioned that several times. And I wanted to have that uh, from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 11, verse 24. God created everything for love. God doesn't hate anyone because God is a passionate lover of life. A God that is a passionate lover of life is not going to allow our life to end in misery. Whatever viruses come along our way, he will find a way which is part of the whole trinity as uh, Mother Mary rose to the heavens. Something of us is eternal and we have to back it up and we are not definitely going to die in tragedy but uh, and we're going to have a happy ending in the Trinity. And I'd like to wrap this up with an amen because this is kind of a sermon, isn't it? Well, this was fantastic. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Thank you for your participation, our ideas, and your food for thought that we shared this afternoon. Over 1,100 people on YouTube and 80 in here, this uh, Zoom room. So. This is a room for, for fraternity, for sharing, and for looking into utopic realities. And Pedro Munoz is here with us. 
maybe could sing the song uh, about Earth, which is a great harmony for us to sow happiness to all of us. Pedro, it's all yours. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Eduardo. Good afternoon, all of you. I would like to offer a very fraternal embrace to our dearest Leonardo Boff. Uh, I've been working as a troubadour for over 40 years now, and I believe in the uh, power of uh, the troubadour and his guitar, and uh, that's what I do. So when I was invited for this meeting this afternoon, I remember the first readings I had uh, with Leonardo Boff and Ernesto Cardenal. And yesterday, before uh, today, I made uh, a song. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to read the poem, but uh, then I'll sing the uh, Song of the Earth because I started reflecting about the first readings and the first uh, opportunities I had to listen to our dear friend Leonardo. And we get to the conclusion on that we know we don't know. And a little part of this uh, lyric is like, my verse is not literate. It speaks to the heart. My life is not a snapshot, but a pathway of songs, a river, a bit of bush, and the silence in the desert. My days do not count the hour, but it's guided by the sun and the moon. Death is a supreme uh, reality in our life. Sometimes our smile takes long to flourish. My everything is made out of nothing and everything that I made out of the road, memories and uh, the sense of longing and the uh, histories that are put together with the whiteness of age. My dreams are not large. They are not large, but they embrace everything I know. What I have is enough. It doesn't matter. I earn things and I lose things, but from now on, what is certain that I, is that I will walk along the path. Wonderful. That was beautiful. <laughs> This is a song that I made, and uh, it's been around uh, in some places, and we are quite happy because a great troubadour friend of mine used to say that when we create something and after we sing it for the first time, it's not ours anymore. I am a gaúcho that lives in the countryside of Piauí. And all the songs that leave here they don't belong to me anymore. They belong to the people, to nature. And everything that we receive on an everyday basis. No princípio o verbo se fez fogo, nem Atlas tinha o globo, mas tinha um nome, o lugar. É na terra. É na Oh, 
céus todos o teu filho vem cantar. Se ele der o sonho por inteiro, só do céu em terra, só guerreiro, com a missão de ser Mas apesar de tudo isso, o latifúndio é feito isso que precisa acabar. Romper as cercas, a ignorância que produz a intolerância, terra de quem plantar. Parabéns. Thank you all. Good and big hug to all of you. Well, thank you, Pedro, for everything. And thank you, Leonardo, for everything you said, which has been going through Latin America. We have people from Mexico, people from Argentina, through Lucas's voice. Lucas still here with us. Bolivia, Venezuela, Colombia, who are together with us today and uh, we need to hear more of this message leonardo the economy of francis and clara is an exercise of listening to the peoples of the earth to mother earth itself and this is the exercise that this these youth uh, that are going to assisi need to do to listen to these people and, and everything because the new economies are already there they're just hidden in this uh, greed of this uh, monopoly, the policy of death. And Pope Francis, when he goes to Bolivia and sent to La Sierra to talk to popular movements, he states that the popular movements of the world are the sowers of hope because they live in the heart of the torment of human beings and the Pope calls upon us to defend land, housing, and labor under three lights that you mentioned, the economy, the services of the people, uniting people on the pathway of peace, and the fight for Mother Earth. These three aspects are fantastic and essential for us to fight for the economy of Francis and Carla, uh, Clara, Clara, in fact which is a global movement that supports people in the sense of building a new earth of hope. And having so many people united from so many different areas, these people building the Brazilian articulation, uh, Igor Rodrigo from Sufrajupi, other articulation from Brumadinho to Mexico, from the south where Andres is, to Moca where Sally and Silvana are, Andre, so many people, and Isabel, and so many people that are not in here but who are in YouTube and are part of this articulation for the Francis and Clara economy. So we have to have this collective room for debate. All of you who join this debate can contribute and build the way through ASIS. And after ASIS, we can be a movement of transition from capitalism to a biocentric community. And that's what we believe in. And that's what we hear from you, Leonardo, who is a strong representative of uh, everything that is coming up in the a periphery of Latin America. And to all the interpreters who helped us in this room, our gratitude 
to all of you. And we thank you for this fantastic space that were built for us. And we congratulate them all for the kind of work they do. But I'd like to reinstate the need for all of us to walk along the path of our daily operations and activities, socializing this reality of a new world. Pandemics is not going to break us apart. It just brought an alert that Francis and Carla, I mean, Francis and Clara's economy need to talk about hunger, uh, misery and disease in the SEC forum. And we need to build ways of justice. And I'd like to move on to Paulo now from the Resistentist channel who built this conversation with us. Paulo, it's all yours. Juan Eduardo and everyone else, uh, Friar Rodrigo, Celia, Patterson, Andre, everyone else that wasn't here with us today. We have been able to listen to Leonardo Boffi and uh, we could uh, listen to him for hours and hours because a number of people who were in here, uh, Friar Boff, uh, we had people from Peru, Chile, Ecuador, and they said, look, we're there with you. And there were people from Cuba as well, from Rome. This is just to reinforce that the words of uh, Leonardo Boff gain the world. It's like the pollen that plants produce and birds uh, spread throughout the world. Thank you very much to all of you. Pedro Munoz could just play a little more so we can bring this to an end with a very soft and blessed song. We would like to thank all of you who are in here and who are in the chat. See you next time. And definitely we're going to be together doing very important things. And uh, Leonardo Boff, you are our dear guest. You come and share more work with us whenever you're available. Well, oh, Paulo, while Pedro is getting ready, I just want to highlight one thing. It comes through in there, Ricardo, and it's important for us to share that. Uh, we have Brazilian women that in Europe are coming up with a manifestation, a demonstration called Stop Bolsonaro on the 28th of June. And this is something that has been on the rise. It's on Facebook and Instagram and as a concrete gesture. And we believe that we have stronger and stronger fight against this policy of death that goes throughout Latin America and uh, in Brazil. We have to put an end to Bolsonaro and uh, fascism. It's important for all of you to get to know this demonstration on the 28th of June. So, Pedro? Eduardo, André, uh, all of you who are out there, thank you very much for this additional lesson. And uh, as a good uh, troubadour, troubadours are uh, rebellious ever since the 10th century, they have been that. And I'm going to sing a song called My Country is the Planet. I think that it goes hand in hand with everything that we're saying. And this is a song that is in one of the uh, records that I uh, publicized. De mapas tão diferentes Em meio a tanta gente Povoados tão distantes Sete mares navegantes Alfabeto de tantas letras Mesmo são tantos cometas Eu não sou um forasteiro Meu lugar é o mundo inteiro Meu país é o planeta Tem desertos e savanas Os trópicos e geleiras Tem floresta companheira Preservada para quem ama Cuida mais também reclama O poder tem mil facetas Interfira assim prometa Eu não sou um fasteiro Meu lugar é o mundo inteiro Meu país é o planeta É a terra generosa que nos dá o alimento 
A semente, o sustento, rubra, a beleza da rosa, quando bombas poderosas têm destino na etiqueta, pobreza explode, arrebenta. Eu não sou um forasteiro, meu lugar é o mundo inteiro, meu país é o planeta. Onde tudo começou, mãe África sofredora, foi por mãos exploradoras, negro escravo do Senhor, chancela do imperador, jutearam da mãe preta, a verdade nas gavetas, eu não sou um forasteiro, meu lugar é o mundo inteiro, meu país é o planeta. As viúvas iraquianas A resistência cubana, a palestina da manhã Dia de festa pagã, alegria na colheita Chegada em si é da maestra, eu não sou um forasteiro Meu lugar, eu não entendo, meu país é o planeta A vida vai muito além de tudo que se divisa Sociedade permissiva, massificada também, a mudança sempre vem, luta, fuzil e caneta, e o triunfo se completa. Eu não sou um forasteiro, meu lugar é o mundo inteiro, meu país é o planeta. Tchau, gente. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Paulo. Thank you all. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Tchau, Leonardo. Bye, Leonardo. Pleasure to see you. Pedro Munhoz, que honra. Você é um grande trovador. Great honor, Pedro is a great troubadour. Obrigado a todos. Eduardo. Rodrigo, mantém o espírito forte. Viu, Rodrigo? Rodrigo, keep a strong spirit, ok? Sim, vamos tocando juntos. All right, yeah, we're moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. I'm going to end our broadcast. Thank you very much. Great weekend to all of you. Thank you.